So you guys seem to really like the genetic privacy and ethics video that I did a couple weeks back, and there were some really interesting discussions that happened in the comments section. So I thought that this week we would do something kind of similar and talk about de-extinction. Now back in February, the amazing people at TED-Ed brought me out to TED Active, where I got to watch a lot of this year's TED Talks live. And I got to spend a lot of the week brainstorming with some really cool people, but the TED Talk that left me with the most questions coming out of it was Stuart Brandt's talk on de-extinction. Now I will put a link to the talk in the doobly-doo and I recommend that you go watch it, but I'll give you a little summary of what he said. His talk used the passenger pigeon as an example of an animal that we might be able to bring back from extinction. The last passenger pigeon died in 1914, but before that there had been huge flocks of them, hundreds of thousands of birds, some of which were reported to be a mile wide and 400 miles long the flocks, not the birds themselves. These birds were a keystone species in their ecosystem, but were hunted to extinction by humans. But what if we could bring this pigeon back? The talk laid out a scheme for doing just this. The first step in doing this would be reassembling the passenger pigeon genome. Now there are passenger pigeon specimens in museums, so we could take DNA from those specimens and try and reassemble them. However, because this isn't living DNA, it's not coming from a living organism, it will probably have degraded a bit. Now that's okay, because we can patch together the DNA from this older organism with the DNA of its closest living relative, the banded-tailed pigeon. In that way, we would get a genome that is not exact to the older passenger pigeon, but is perfect enough. Now the first animal to be brought back from extinction, or de-extincted, I guess, was the Bucardo and Ibex from the Pyrenees. Scientists took Bucardo DNA and implanted it as a cloned egg into an Ibex goat hybrid, and they actually had a live baby Bucardo that was born. Unfortunately, it had a malformed lung and it died after only about 10 minutes. But it was an animal that had previously been extinct that was then brought back. Now this isn't the only science we would need to get back the passenger pigeon. One of the other suggested routes includes IPS cells, or induced pluripotent stem cells. And these are so cool and one of my favorite things in science right now, and so I'm going to try and explain them briefly. What you can do is you can take a differentiated adult cell, give it four different factors, and have it actually revert back to a pluripotent stem cell. And then from there, you can take that stem cell and change it into any other kind of cell. Which is so cool! You can take a you know, fibroblast or something and then make it into a neuron. I don't know, that's just awesome to me. Now what some scientists have done is they've taken falcon fibroblasts, changed them into iPS cells, and then changed them into falcon germ cells. And germ cells are the cells that will go on to create sperm and egg. So you take these falcon germ cells, you insert them into chicken embryos, and then you get chickens, and they're totally normal chickens, except for the fact that they are producing falcon sperm and falcon eggs, which is crazy! So now you take this chicken and you breed it with another chicken, and instead of getting a chicken, you get a falcon. I, whoa. Now hold up just a second. So I'm editing this piece and I stop and I think, wait a second, if there were chickens giving birth to falcons, we would have heard about this, it would have been all over the news. And so I went back and I started trying to find more sources for some of the things that Brand said in his talk. And I couldn't find one for this. I don't think anyone's actually doing this. Now I did find evidence that Mike McGrew's lab has done something where they've taken a male duck uh, that has sort of chicken uh, germ cells in it, so it's producing chicken sperm, and then a female chicken, and you mate the two, and then you get a viable chick. But I haven't seen anything done with chickens and falcons, and so I think Brand was trying to say that this is what they're working on, this is where we're going, and it is definitely a really cool way that we could bring back extinct birds, and I think this idea of putting germ cells into another embryo is awesome, like that's so cool. But I don't think it's being done quite the way that he presented it, and so I did want to make that one amendment, because I don't want to be misleading here. It was not the only time in Brand's talk where I had a moment of, is that really right? But it's, you know, it's on the right track, but maybe not quite with the falcons and the chickens. So this is a proposed way of creating a new passenger pigeon. You take your hybridized passenger pigeon genome, you use it to create passenger pigeon stem cells, then you take these stem cells, you make them into passenger pigeon germ cells, then you put that into chicken embryos. So now you have two chickens, which are chickens, but they're l developing passenger pigeon sperm and eggs, you mate them together, and then out you get a passenger pigeon. You get a chicken laying passenger pigeons. That's cool. Now if you take a large flock of passenger pigeons, they're gonna need 
food. And a quick Google search let me know that passenger pigeons used to eat things like nuts and berries. So let's say that you take this flock of new passenger pigeons and you put them into an ecosystem and they eat all the berries. Well, there were probably other animals that were already eating those berries. So maybe these passenger pigeons are going to outcompete, you know, say a squirrel that was eating berries. Maybe are these squirrels now all going to die because they can't find food? And what is it that was eating these passenger pigeons before? Things like foxes and raccoons. Well, now they're going to have this huge new food source. You're probably going to get a whole lot more foxes and a whole lot more raccoons. And what is that going to mean for that ecosystem if you suddenly go from having, you know, two foxes for every area to having 20 foxes for every area? They might eat all the other birds. They might eat all those squirrels that were already going to die because the passenger pigeons were eating all their berries. I mean, there's a huge amount of stuff that could all go wrong here. But Brent makes the point that these animals weren't pushed to extinction because something in their ecosystem went wrong. They were pushed to extinction because we killed them all. So. Are we just righting the wrongs that we did by bringing these animals back? Now, National Geographic ran a series of articles on this topic as well, and so Carl Zimmer wrote a couple of articles for them, which I thought were really good looks at the topic. Now, he first addressed a whole bunch of questions that people had, and one of those is, you know, does this mean we can start Jurassic Park? And no, not really. So there's really not going to be any viable DNA left in 65 million year old cells. So we're not going to be able to make dinosaurs. Zimmer also took a look at the route to creating these passenger pigeons and his version of the story looked a little bit different in that it used rock pigeons instead of banded tailed pigeons to sort of hybridize and create that new passenger pigeon genome. And he also suggested that scientists might be injecting the newly created passenger pigeon stem cells into the embryos of rock pigeons instead. So you get rock pigeons laying these passenger pigeons. And that route makes a lot more sense to me. Um, but I think it, they might just be sort of different ways that the scientists are looking at doing this right now. I don't think that one is right and the other is wrong. I think that these are just sort of two different paths that people are going down to try and create these passenger pigeons. Zimmer mentioned a couple of other things about why we might want to do this. So biodiversity is always good. Biodiversity on our planet both leads to more scientific discovery and it also helps keep ecosystems happy. And so having lots of diverse different types of animals around is good for everyone. He also talks a little bit about the fact that genetic drift could be a problem for these new populations of introduced animals. If you have a small passenger pigeon population, they don't have a lot of genetic diversity between them. And so if they start interbreeding, you could end up with passenger pigeons who aren't really able to cope with their environment and could again become extinct. So that is a problem with this. He also talks a little bit about the fact that people often ask if we could bring back a woolly mammoth. And actually, I love the fact that his main like stepping point here, the problem, the like block from people doing this is that we would have to put the mammoth uh, DNA into an elephant egg because, you know, similarly sized animals and an elephant could probably give birth to a woolly mammoth. But nobody's been able to harvest elephant eggs yet. And I don't know why, why they can't do this yet. I don't know if it's just that nobody's really tried or if they don't stay viable, but in my head, this is because the elephant just looks at the researcher and goes, uh-uh, you are not taking these eggs. So I don't really know what's happening there, but I like to think that nobody can just get at the eggs. But on a more serious note, Zimmer also brings up the fact that there's no environment to reintroduce these animals into. It's sort of my passenger pigeon fear of throwing them into these environments again, that the ecosystems that they left are no longer there and we would probably have trouble reintroducing them into an environment. There's no home for these animals anymore. So where would they go? Where would they fit? What would they do? What would they disrupt? It's, it's a lot of good questions. So this is just a really brief look at the conversation about de-extinction that is happening right now. But it's one that a lot of people are having and one that I'd like to know your opinions on as well. Scientists have figured out a tentative path to bringing back some extinct animals. Should we? Is that something we should be doing? Is it something that we should be playing with? Is it good because we're restoring the wrongs that we did by making these animals go extinct? Is it wrong because we're, you know, putting them into environments that they could destroy? Is it weird because we have no idea what is going to happen when we reintroduce these animals? They could do amazing things for the environment or they could do horrible things for the environment. They could help other species grow or they could completely demolish other places. It's like adding an invasive species into a new environment. They might wreak havoc. Again, as in the genetic privacy discussion, 
I do not have answers to any of these questions. I'm trying to sort of wrap my head around all of them as well and sort of look at a whole lot of different people talking about this and I'm trying to read as much as I can about it to sort of learn and absorb, but I can give you my opinions. So first off, from a purely scientific level, do I want to bring back extinct animals? Yes. Oh man, this is so cool. The science behind it, the fact that we're using IPS cells and we're using sort of hybrid genomes, this is awesome. And I want to know if it works and I want to try it out and I want to do it. And this is so freaking cool. Like this is awesome science, guys. This is the culmination of lots of things and there it's a combination. You're bringing together lots of different types of science and bringing back extinct animals. Come on, that's awesome. But from a sort of moral ethical standpoint, I don't know that we should be doing this. I mean, the science is super cool, don't get me wrong, and I totally want to know if we can do it, but we don't know what's going to happen when we reintroduce these animals into the ecosystem. They might fit in perfectly, or they might cause a whole lot of stuff to go wrong, and there's no way for us to know that at the moment. If in the future there's a way for us to look at that and to be able to control it, then yeah, maybe, sure, we could try and do this, but right now, I cannot imagine letting a mile-wide, 400-mile-long flock of passenger pigeons loose on the country. There were reports, you know, back when they were actually around that they would just destroy a farmer's field as one pack came through. They would just eat all the grain, or they would go through and just destroy whole forests and break off branches from the weight of all the birds sitting on them, and they, I mean, this is... We don't know what's going to happen when we bring these animals back. I just don't know if it's a good idea. So let me know. Personally, I would love to try, but ethically, I don't think I should. So let me know what you think. Again, no answers, just lots of questions. But you guys had a really good discussion going on in the genetic privacy one, and I hope this one will have a similar discussion. So keep thinking, go forth, and do science.